I think Chinese ceramics really became famous during the Ming Dynasty and the Qing Dynasty and also through the Silk Road. People from Europe, everywhere, they were just buying in all these blue and white porcelain or any other type of porcelain because it was something that only China had. You bring educators and students from the UK to Jingdezhen. What are they amazed by? For artists and ceramicists, they're amazed by how many people who work in ceramics, I would say that, because it's, it's pretty much the whole city. Everywhere you go to ceramics, piles and piles of porcelain everywhere, it's like a dream. You know, you go in and then that's all your favorite things around you. Throughout much of history, many of the most important kilns and official kilns have been owned or overseen by the emperors of China. Why do you think they were so interested in this one particular art form of the many that you can find in China? The imperial side, you will have special glazes and special painting. For example, you have the imperial yellow, which only it, you know, the emperor can use that. From the imperial kilns, diplomatic gifts, which then spread out into the world. Was that the start of the globalization of ceramics? We had porcelain at that time, uh, but we didn't have cobalt. And cobalt is the, it's the blue from blue and white porcelain. And cobalt was first found in Iran during the 9th century. And then through the help of Silk Road, um, they, the cobalt traveled up to China and then they started painting on porcelain. People were so amazed by how nice the blue came out with this translucent material. Um, people misunderstood, thought it was some kind of stone, some kind of jade, because it was so thin, it was so translucent and it was so strong. I think it was a material that the outside world had never seen before and that's where all the fascination started. You know, there must be a beginning. It, there must be a reason why people are doing it because they wanted to mass produce it. They wanted to perfect the skill even more. They wanted to have a consistency. So sitting here, what story of Jindajin would you choose to share with us? People in Jindajin, the local people in Jindajin, they're all very humble because they grew up with ceramics. They don't understand how special it is until maybe someone from outside comes into Jindajin and then they see all these, you know, um, fantastic skills and all these huge factories making exactly the same thing. A lot of the local Jindajin people, they would like to keep the tradition going and also for them or for us, we, we wanted to see it keep on happening because it's, it's the history and skills that's been tasked passed down for thousands of years and people are improving it as it goes. I think people are most surprised that China is such a fast-growing country but when it comes to ceramics there's still quite a lot of them is completely handmade. I am James Chow, you're watching The China Current. Follow us on social media at The China Current.